Hello and welcome back. In this video, we are going to continue our introduction to AWS, this time focusing on S3. However, first, as usual, I do need to give the disclaimer that this course and specifically these sets of videos are to provide a high level introduction to Amazon Web Services using oversimplification of concepts for the purpose of providing a frame of reference for you to move forward. So when we left off at the end of last video, we had discussed how Netflix uses Amazon EC2 as well as Amazon RDS and how those services are used and how they're reflected when a user actually goes to www.netflix.com. Now we're going to dive into where Netflix actually stores the thousands upon thousands, if not tens of thousands, if not even more, of actual video files that power their content. So episode one, episode two, episode three, there have to be those video files, multiple versions of them stored somewhere. And this is where S3 comes into play. So Amazon S3 is the storage platform of AWS. And specifically, what Amazon S3 is, is it's basically just a large unlimited storage bucket. Now, when I say unlimited, obviously there is a limit in there somewhere, but the limit is so unbelievably high right now that no individual user or company even comes close to reaching the theoretical limit of storage capacity currently allowed in S3. So S3 is a perfect place for any documents, movies, music, applications, pictures, anything that you have that you want to store, you can drop into S3 and it is going to be there for as long as you'd like. And it is going to be multiple redundancies and backups of the files that you put there. So again, you're always going to have high availability of any files that you decide to store in S3. Now also think about a service like Dropbox that you may have heard about or may currently be using. Dropbox actually is just a nice user interface that is backed up with S3 stores. So when you upload a file to Dropbox, if you use Dropbox, you're actually just putting your file into an Amazon S3 bucket. So down here, I've now marked several common uses of Amazon S3, and one is it's just a mass storage container. And it is also great for long-term storage. Now, if you remember Amazon EC2, I told you to think about that just kind of like a regular computer. And as a part of that, it has a hard drive or a local storage. Now, the hard drive or the local storage on Amazon EC2 isn't permanent in the sense that anything that you want to store long term, you don't want to store on the hard drive of your EC2 instance. Because if you remember before, in the previous video, when we talked about RDS, I gave the example of scaling up and scaling down and adding EC2 servers, rem removing EC2 servers. And so you don't want to have things that you want to keep forever on EC2 local storage because as you add or remove instances, then you could potentially lose that information or lose that data. Now, when you get into later courses about Amazon Web Services, you will find that there are different ways to work around those restrictions while using Amazon EC2. But as a total fail safe, Amazon S3 is the perfect place for anything that you want to keep for a long time. And it has a load of redundancies. And it's great because it's basically unlimited storage. So Amazon S3 is where Netflix stores the petabytes upon petabytes of video files that they have to store. So just to quickly recap, Amazon S3 is a massive storage bucket. It's really just as simple as that. Obviously, there's a lot more to it when you actually get into the technical details of it. But for now, all I want you to realize or what I want you to remember is that Amazon S3 is a massive storage bucket. Next, what we're going to do is actually go into EC2 part two, and we're going to talk about what actually happens when you click play on Netflix to start streaming a video. But for now, that will conclude this video. Thank you for watching. You may now move on.